Hello, welcome to Candy Shop Yarns, where everything is sugar-free and high in fiber. I am Deborah, the owner of Candy Shop Yarns, and this is the ultimate destination for knitting and crochet enthusiasts. It is episode 26, six. It is mid-March 2024, and I am living dangerously because I do not have show notes prepared. I have a pile of things around me here and I'm just gonna dig through and chat about them and hope that everything turns out. <laughs> it will all be great, but um, I normally start with a life update. I'm actually gonna do that at the end because I have some um, health news and not everybody wants to hear that, but I thought I'd give you an update for those who come here um, wanting to know more about myself and my life than just my crafting. But for those of you that are here just to see yarn, um, knitting, crochet, sewing, beautiful things like that, then we'll just get started with that. I don't have any crochet today, though I I'm just itching to start something. Um, I just want to crochet. That's all I want to do right now. But I'm trying to finish projects that I have. Um, so I have some crochet things planned. And it might be a problem once I get started on that. And that's all there will be. But that's okay. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> so let's look around and see. What do I have going on? Where are my finished projects? Okay. I have, let's, let's dig in. Oh yes, so many beautiful things that came in the mail this month. It's been over a month since I have recorded last. Sorry. Okay, I have finished a test knit. It is the Baking Doodle Cowl. Ooh. Look at how fun that is. Okay, let's go through it got cookies, piping swirls, Swiss rolls, cupcakes. <laughs> Come here, Luna. Birthday cake, donuts. I added the sprinkles on afterwards and more Swiss rolls, bigger cupcakes. It's just so much fun. This was a test knit for um, Pacific Knit Co. And I picked out not all of just the sweet treats, but I just picked out sweet treats and frosting swirls. Um, there were a lot of other things like an oven, oven mitt, whisk, mixers, bowl, mixing bowls, eggs, a lot of things that were just so cute. Um, but I, I thought that this was a fun theme. So I did the double-sided cowl so inside and the outside both have the pattern and when you put it on let's take off my glasses you're okay luna the the designs go sideways this way you'll see vertical rows that's what the double-sided cowl is like you can make it really long and loop it twice, do an infinity cowl where it has a twist in it. Um, you can do it with fingering weight yarn. I used DK weight yarn. I used my um, 50 gram Candy Kisses skeins and I, let's see, what colors did I use? I have to remember because now it's been a little bit. Okay, the darker pink is Dreamhouse and this tealy blue color is Knuff. <laughs> the purpley blue is Butterfly P-T. The, as in P-E-A, <laughs> Butterfly P-E-A-T. The minty green is Skyberry Pop. The lighter pink background is sugar and spice and then this um white with 
little speckly bits background is my Jawbreaker colorway. That was all of them. Yes, that's what I used in this cowl. That was very fun. This pattern is out now, so you can get that from um, Pacific Knit Co. Before I even finished that test knit, there was a call for another one and I had to sign up for it. I had to. So it's because it included flamingos and I love pink flamingos so much. So it's the Jungle Doodle Cowl and I am almost finished with it. I just have a little more ribbing. Look. So this is a hibiscus flower, flamingo, monstera leaves, and then I did a border on the bottom and reversed it on the top. And then I did um, a folded, come here, no, no squeaky toys again. Again with the squeaky toys whenever I record. Come here, come here, come on. I did um, folded ribbing. It's, um, what is that called? My brain, I cannot remember. It's where the knit stitches you knit through the back loop and it creates something special. I can't remember the name of it all of a sudden, the term. Um, now the, the hibiscus flowers, there's another chart that has bigger ones with leaves and that one is so pretty. Um, but I did the smaller one and you can't see on the camera as well, but it does have color work in here where there's pink veining with this pink color going through. I'll show you the colors that I used, but it, the camera is not picking this up, unfortunately. So there is like a melony orange color with pink um, veins going through the flower. I'm going to duplicate stitch the stamen here with this magenta, deeper magenta. Oh, now you can kind of see it if I get it really close. Um, I'm going to duplicate stitch that after I block. So I'm halfway through the ribbing on the top. I need to knit the same amount again, fold it down and stitch that down. But this is all the yarn I have left. Yeah, I'm not going to have enough. If I had done the ribbing on the bottom and the top with just one inch, like the pattern suggested, instead of, I think I did like one and a half maybe, I would have had enough with one with 100 grams of this yellow. So now I have to break into a 50 gram skein of this yarn just to do the little bit of ribbing. But that's okay, it's okay because I will use this yarn. Um, so I dyed some more colors for this cowl. I'll show you those. I'll show you those all at the end when I do some shop news. Um, so this one is the single-sided cowl. So the other one was the double-sided, but this one is single-sided. So let's look at floats. I'm not gonna flip the whole thing. Well, maybe I can if I'm careful and hold my needles here. Here are my floats. I weave in all my ends, except for I have two here that I have not done yet. But I like to do that as I go along so I don't have a whole bunch dangling all over and getting in the way. Um, but I do leave a tail because when I go and block it, you know, eventually they want to work their way through to the front if you have it too short. So I leave some dangly bits, but that looks really fun. So that is the single-sided cowl. So when you put it on, which I'm not gonna put it on because I don't want it to come off of the needles, it sits on your neck <laughs> this way instead of this this way. <laughs> so I put the flamingos in the middle because that was my favorite design. 
and I bordered it with two different things, but also because it tends to squish up and you'll just see the flamingos more than you'll see anything else. So that is fun. I also find it interesting that I'm knitting tropical, summery things in something that you'll wear in the winter, but <laughs> I love, I love pink flamingos. So there is another, okay, well, there's a lot of designs in this. I'm going to cover up, here's my, my chart. I mean, I know that Jamie shows it, but I just don't feel like I can. <laughs> That's my chart. But you get to mix and match a whole bunch of charts, whatever you like. And there's animals and there's rivers and snakes and birds. And there's um, a jungle. There's a, a, a river boat. River boat, is that what she called it? Like a jungle cruise boat. Um, but in the, in the group chat for all the test knitters, somebody saw that there were there was leopard print and said, wouldn't it be fun if somebody here did just the leopard print like Lisa Frank inspired? I was like, yes, that would be. Nobody seemed to plan on doing that. I want to take that up. So I'm like, I'm going to do that for sure. So I took the chart and I manipulated it, moved it around a bit to make um, like so that it they staggered and I think I flipped some around. So they staggered where it started and stopped in the chart. I flipped some upside down. I got rid of some of the separating rows so that it would just be all a continuous um, leopard print pattern. And then I went and found some of the Lisa Frank art and picked out colors from there. And it just so happened to be colors in this. This is something that I shared before. This is one of my crafting tools and I use it as a row counter. So when I finish a row, I pop, I pop that number, but this was sitting there and I keep thinking, I want to dye yarn in these colors. So I've dyed some yarn. I'm going to show you those at the end <laughs> or towards the end, just not quite yet. So you can see what I'm going to do with that. I'm really excited. Did I finish anything else? No, I didn't finish anything else. I finished this cowl. I'm almost done with this cowl, but I ran out of yarn last night and I didn't want to wind up another skein. So I will finish this today and then block it and then I can duplicate stitch and this will be done. Oh, I love that. I love pink flamingos so much. Um, let's see, what else have I been working on? Okay. I have done quite a bit of work on my um, cardigan using my Mermaid Kingdom collection colorways. Let's untangle here. This is a fingering weight cardigan. It, the pattern, come here, is by Hohi Locatelli and it's called La Prairie. And this is what I have done. <laughs> it doesn't look like much, but that's, that was so much work. <laughs> Last time, which was just over a month ago, I had done the back up to the point where you um, join underarm. Come here. In there. And then I did the, I did one side of this up to this point, and that's all I had done. So since then, I picked up stitches on this side. I knit down to here, and then you join in, not in the round. You join the back and both side front panels together and work back and forth and back and forth. Um, and so I was, well, let's see, I was right here. I have since done that much. And I feel like that's a lot <laughs> for 
a fingering weight cardigan that is heavily patterned and I also am fading different colors. So it was just kind of a lot to stay on, on top of like paying attention to, but I feel like this is gonna be well worth it. My goal for this when I started was to finish this, well, in about a month from now, that's not gonna happen. There's just no way. It took me over a month to get this much done with a little, no. I'll be lucky if I finish the body. So I'm just a little ha more than, it hardly seems like it, but I'm a little more than halfway through the body. Now this is not a long cardigan. It just comes to like waist, like to your waist, um, in the front, just a little bit lower in the back. But you know, when one bobble row, row, bobble row takes me an hour, then it's just gonna take some time and that's okay. I just wanted to have it done because I thought it would be such a great shop sample. But also I just want this. This was on my make nine board. So um, I'm just gonna keep plugging away at it and enjoy the process rather than feeling stressed about a time frame. I'm just gonna enjoy the process and I do enjoy it a lot. So the colorways that I'm using are Seaside Sunset. That was the first one. The second one is Seabed Sparkle. The one I'm on right now is Ocean Odyssey. And then the last two, oh boy, that's attached to my swatch, my gauge swatch. <laughs> The last two are these two. This one is Pearl of the Sea and Siren Song. Um, I have used some of, which ones? I can't remember, maybe all four of these. I think I've used some of all four of these. Oh, not, not, not Seabed Sparkle, I don't think these three in an Arctic doodle cowl, I think. And then I think these two were full skeins. I'm not sure on this one. This one I know it is, but I should have enough yarn. If I don't, I can add in another color from that collection and just keep on going. So it'll be just fine. I'm not worried about that but I'm having a great time with it. It just is a lot of traveling stitches, which are one over one cables, knitting through the back loop, bobbles, knits, pearls, knits, pearls, knits, pearls. So, you know, every, every row has a lot going on, but it keeps it really engaging and fun. Um, what size needle am I, needles am I using? I think I'm knitting on three millimeter needles. Yes, three millimeter needles. So it's just gonna take some time, but I'm enjoying it. Okay, then I have another test knit. <laughs> this one is for my sister Emily of Salt City Knits. And I mentioned that she has, was planning on reopening Yarn Brary, yarn, uh, the Yarn Brary. I'm not sure if it was open at that time in the last video, but it is open now and she is dying up a storm, doing a good job. So um, she has a sock pattern that is really great for scraps, mini skeins, or self-striping yarn. And the pattern is called the Mountain Vista. Is that what it is? The Mountain Vista sock pattern. So I am testing it along with some others that I know she is happy to have you share progress. So this is what I have so far. This is very fun. This is a very engaging pattern because it is simple, but still has something going on. Like it's not just stocking it in the round where you get bored of that quickly because 
um, first of all, you're changing colors, which is always fun. It means you're always like, oh, let's hurry and finish this color and start the next one. So it kind of just drives you forward to do the next color, the next row. And then um, there are three plain rounds and then a patterned round. So there's not a lot you have to remember. So um, the, the repeats are four rounds and you always wanna just get to that next repeat and then that next repeat and then the next color and then the next repeat. And so like I went through this in just a couple days and normally it takes me way longer to knit socks than that. So um, the colorways that I'm using are from my February um, Enchanted Nostalgia Mystery Minis Club. <laughs> the theme of that one was um, Saturday morning cartoons. I'll put a picture of that up here so you can see what was included in that. And those were really fun colorways to dye up and I loved the images. And then I threw in a little sticker of strawberry shortcake because I just, I just had to. <laughs> so that's what I'm using for these stripes, but for the cuffs, heels, and toes, I am using my um, Jawbreaker colorway, which is little specks of fun, bright colors. And I really love to use that one when I need something. Like I could have used just a plain undyed colorway or I could have done a solid that would have gone with this but I mean how fun does that look with it oh I love it love it so um this pattern I'm not sure when it's coming out but it won't be too long I think it's only going to be a couple more weeks maybe a few weeks and then this will be out and this is definitely going to be a go-to pattern so um you can use whatever you know scraps and change them however often you want it just it just makes them look really fun using minis and that's something I know a lot of us are like what do we do with the mini skeins this is a good one so this is my first sock I've got the cutest little charm here I ordered I don't remember where I ordered it from I ordered a whole bunch because I got some that's going to be for a make along coming up here in just a little bit. Um, yeah, I ordered quite a stash of these. <laughs> they were so cute. But this I'm making because I am a terrible um, host of make alongs, <laughs> or at least I am for this one. <laughs> So this one was the Enchanted um, Nostalgia Mal. So for those who are participating, like purchasing the minis, they want to, you can participate by making something with those minis and then tagging it with the hashtag Enchanted Nostalgia Mal <laughs> on Instagram to be entered to win. Well, I've been so terrible at it that nobody even knows what's going on. <laughs> and. I hadn't made anything until now. So now I'm participating in my own mouth. So no surprise if nobody else has, because you know, it's hard to know that it's happening if nobody tells you. So, <laughs> And then I've got that in a bag from my friend Cherie from Ollie and Bella. She sent this to me one time, just we did a little swap and that was fun. But in the bottom, so I have those in this bag and then underneath I have another test knit. <laughs> but I can't show you that one. It's a sock, but that one is, um, that one is a secret one until it's released. So the fun thing is I am the arm dyer for that one. So, so I'm not actually in the test, like I'm not a tester. I'm just I'm the yarn dyer but I'm knitting it at the same time as a tester so I guess I'm a tester I, I don't know it doesn't really matter um 
So all of my projects. What's in here? Oh yes, these are my leftovers from, oh, look at this cute bag. This one is from Jewels of So Sweet Violet. With her cute rainbow pin. Um, these are my leftovers from the Jungle Doodle Cowl. So this is the, the coral color that I did for the hibiscus but it was hard to see on the camera because what happened was the pink and the coral next to each other blended together and made it look more pink. So if I were to do it again, I wouldn't have done those two together. I, I wouldn't have done that. So let's see, let's put my scraps in here. Oh, here's my, here's my little bag from the Saturday morning cartoon. This is the little strawberry shortcake um, sticker. And then the postcard from this month. I think I have a friend who collects postcards and she sends them all the time. That's why she likes them because she's in a group that they send them out all the time. I like postcards because I like to use these for treasure journaling. So I think those are fun. Okay, so that's all of my current projects. I wanted to show you, I showed you this last time that I had pulled out these scraps that I thought, oh, these are so fun and happy colors. What am I gonna do with them? I figured out what I'm doing with them. This pattern has since came out. This is the Starburst Squares Cowl by Zines and Rogers. What it is are little, little granny squares, tiny granny squares made into a cowl with a pretty lace edging. Oh, how fun is that? That's what I'm gonna do with these. That will be the most lovely, cheerful cowl. And it's fingering weight yarn, so it's not too thick. So that's a good one for spring. And it only needs little bits of yarn. So I can use, you know, even the tiniest, I don't have the tiniest scraps in here, but it could use even the tiniest ones. So that's a crochet project that I have planned to start. Okay. I wanted to share some things that have come in that are super fun. Where am I gonna put this? Okay, so in my knitting group, we had a couple of things going on. First of all, um, there were a few of us, I, I asked at the beginning of the year if there was anybody that wanted to participate in an Easter Advent swap. So Advent, I'd say an Easter countdown because Advent really is for Christmas, but an Easter countdown swap. And there were four or five of us. There were only a few of us that were like, yeah, I wanna do that. So um, I was one of them and my sister Emily was one and she ended up getting my name. Um, so we didn't directly swap straight across. I had somebody else's name. They would have someone else's, you know, we're all swapping with somebody completely different, not like back and forth. If, uh, I don't know if that was clear, but that's okay. So we got together for lunch last week to to give each other our, our swap packages. And so this is the one from Emily. It was in here and she wanted me to open up one of them first off while we were there. And let me show you what was in it. This is so fun. Look at that bag. I love this. This is fabric that she used to make her daughter's um, quilt for her daughter's wedding. And when she was making that, I was drooling over that quilt. So I just cannot believe my luck that I ended up 
with a bag made with those fabrics. I am so excited. I love this one. And it's drawstring, um, which I love. I love, I just love all bags. I really am not too particular. I like drawstring because the drawstrings, when you put them on, you know, like I can, I can put it on my wrist and carry it around like a purse. Or if it's a shorter drawstring, I can carry it on my wrist and hold it there while I'm knitting. But, oh, it's so cute. And the fabric inside, oh, love it. So inside this bin are the other packages. So since I already took out one of the packages, that was the bag that was right here. So this is what I have for the countdown. And there should be 12 mini skeins. That's what we talked about, that we would do 12 mini skeins and then we would have three other days that could be whatever we wanted it to be. So with this, I'm going to crochet something. Haven't decided, I'll have to see when I start opening the yarn. But I told you I just wanna crochet, so I'm really excited for that one. It was fun uh, putting together a package for my friend. I hope she likes the yarns that I dyed for her. Because that was the other thing. We talked about how it could just be scraps, like leftovers from projects that you wind off 20 grams from. Okay, in the mail, I also, I, I ordered some yarn and got some beautiful, beautiful yarns from Dandelion and Dogwood. That is Jen and Amy, who are my friends. I wanted to show you, just hold on to your seats because you might fall out of them. So, these are ones that oh, I've been drooling over and they were out of stock and I contacted Amy and she said that they could dye them for me. So there's pink luster wear. Oh my goodness. And then luster wear. Oh. So I've seen um, socks knit out of this one, the Amy knit. So pretty. And then this, this was actually the catalyst. It was this club. So they do a book club where they will dye yarn and it's a mystery one based off of the cover of a book. Look at this, this is tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Isn't that beautiful? And I love pinks and reds. This one is lipstick and lingerie. And then this one I thought would be a perfect one to knit one of my ice cream swirl hats because of the way it's dyed. So Dandelion and Dogwood, they do a lot of skeins like this. I'm gonna, I, Oh, I don't want to mess it up, but I want to show you how this looks. Okay. This is how my ice cream swirl hat pattern is designed. If you open up a hank of yarn and you see that there is a section that's one color, then it works great for that because what it will do is swirl up the hat. And it's designed for DK weight yarn, so um, that's what I that's what I bought this one for was to knit um, one of those hats. Oh, it's not going to be as beautiful now. Okay. Oh, this one is called Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, and it's got two minis. And it might be cute to actually stripe these two for the brim and then start this for the body of the hat. Okay, then the next thing that, oh, let's move that. The next thing that came in the mail, I have talked about my friend Mandy before many times. She's the infamous Mandy. <laughs> Everybody wants to meet, but nobody has. <laughs> she sent me um, the sweetest gift. Wish bear. 
she and I were talking about Care Bears, how much we love Care Bears, and we were talking about how I might do yarns based off of that. And that's what I ended up doing with Saturday morning cartoons was, um, I had an image of Wish Bear on there. Let me get that out again. There it is, there's Wish Bear. <laughs> and she crocheted, now I don't know if she used a pattern because I know, oh, don't bump that. I know that she is really good at just crocheting and making up whatever she wants. So there may not have been a pattern that she used, but she used my yarns. She used my sea foam um, colorway and held it double with my mint mohair for the main body. And then this is just undyed. And then she used floss, embroidery floss and felt for the rainbow and stars and the face. Oh, how cute, look at that. And the little feet, the heart on the feet. So cute. Everything about it is just so cute. She even stuffed it, it looks like, with something green. Because the, the fiber fill doesn't look like the white fiber fill. Unless the mohair fills in those gaps and makes it look like it's a minty green color. That's probably what happened. But it's so cute. Oh my goodness, my granddaughter is going to go crazy over this. I have a little... Oh, it's actually from Mandy. <laughs> a little like train case kind of thing that she decoupaged with Alice in Wonderland stuff. And I have amigurumi that I've made, like little characters that I've made in that. I'm gonna have to put this in there. Or this might have to go on a shelf in my yarn room. That's so cute. Okay, let's do some shop news and then I'll do my life update. So shop news. I shared the the minis club from February, which was the Saturday morning cartoons. And March's is listed in the shop right now. And this is going to be a really sweet color or like sweet theme. It is um, paper dolls. And I have contacted the artist. I have the art for the postcard. And it's actually going to be a little more um, softer, muted colors, but still colors, not earth tones, but a little bit softer, not as bright as the as Saturday morning cartoons. Um, it's very, very sweet and like... I would say gentle artwork <laughs> that I'm using for the inspiration for the colors. So um, you can go and sign up for that on my website. There's actually still plenty of spaces open. I have opened up more than I have done in the previous months because I've sold out in the previous months. So I want to make sure that I have enough. Um, it is still limited. And once I reach a certain point in the month, so the last week is when I dye the yarn. So at that point, then I will cut it off um, and then I dye the yarn and ship it out. So I ship it out at the very end of the month. And then at the beginning of the month, I list the new ones, the new theme. So we have that. And then I have a lot of new 50 gram Candy Kisses colorways. They're not in the shop yet because I have to photograph them, but I've dyed a lot of new colorways. And I've done that because every time there's a new test knit, I pick new colors and I dye new colorways for that. So one of them is Liquid Sunshine. This is a colorway that I already had in fingering weight mini skeins, uh, 20 gram mini skeins. And it is just a warm, happy, sunny yellow. Oh, I don't remember the names of all of these. This yellow is the one that I used on my Jungle Doodle cowl, and this one is Lemoncello. And so this one 
is a lighter, brighter yellow, more clear, I would say. Then I have a new green, which I've called Palm Springs. And then this is not a new colorway, but it is new on the 50 gram Candy Kisses, DK Candy Kisses. This one is Papaya, and this is the coral color. And then this one is Midnight, and I have this one on 20 gram fingering weight mini skeins, but it dyed up differently on this base. So if you were to buy them together, they do not look the same because different bases often look different. So it definitely looked different with the blue, but this one is a deep navy blue. Um, this one doesn't have a name yet, but this one is the highly saturated deep pink magenta colorway. And I need to come up with a name for that one. I have a long list of names, but sometimes it's hard to decide because then if I use the name, I'm like, that one might be perfect for something else. And I don't want to use it on this if it's going to not be the per like I want just the right one. <laughs> so it's like saving yarn for the perfect project. Sometimes I save names of colorways for the perfect colorway. And, and sometimes I'm like, Deborah, just use them. Because there are some that I have held on to for four years. I'm like, just use it. Like Lemoncello, that's one. But this is actually perfect for it, so that's good. Okay. And then I dyed up. You will have seen me winding all of these already. The Lisa Frank collection. The Lisa Frank inspired colorways. So... They're all pastel neons and black. Let me get them out. Oh, I love these so much. So these are the ones that were based off of the row counter. Plus I added some more, but also the Lisa Frank artwork that I'll put right here. So first of all, I did black licorice which I have reformulated to make it a richer, truer black. So um, this one is black licorice and I did a 100 grams for this one for my project. And then this one, oh, I this is probably my favorite one of all of them. This one is sour watermelon. This one I spent some time getting just right. <laughs> because um, this one is a pastel neon pink. I don't have a name for it yet, but if you look at these together, this one is more saturated, but it's also warmer. Oh, I love it. So this one's a pastel neon pink. Hey, you just came in. And let's see, I'm gonna hold these side by side. So, Oh, does this show up in the camera? It doesn't show up as well. Oh, I wish it did. You can almost see <laughs> that there's a difference between these. This is Dream House and this is the pastel neon pink and I don't have a name for this one. The difference is primarily that this one is a neon and that it will glow under a black light and the other one won't. So all of these from this collection except for the black will glow under a black light. And then, what's the name for this one? I can't remember the names. So I've got a blue, a green. I know this one is Jolly Joe's because I have dyed this. This is a previous colorway that was perfect for this collection. And one thing I like is, is it pink? Is it purple? It's got like this slight glazing on it because the mixture of colors that I use, they strike, they like absorb into the yarn at different rates. And so it gives you this kind of variation to it that looks really, really cool. And that same thing has happened on this bottom row where it's like blended together of those two colors. And then I've got two more. I've got another yellow and 
Once again, the name escapes my brain. It's because I just named them yesterday, but something to do with zesty something, sparkler. <laughs> and then um, this one. Oh, I love this one. This one was another one that I played around with for a while to get the right combination of dyes to get just what I wanted. So, I mean, we're all familiar. Uh, maybe we're not all familiar, but on the screen here are a whole bunch of Lisa Frank images, like her artwork. And you can see that they all have these colors in them in common, that they're just really fun and neons and pastel neons and blacks. So they're just so much fun. So I've got lots of new colorways that will be heading to the shop, but it's going to be a little bit. I'll tell you why. So look at that. <laughs> oh, I love those colors so much. Oh, I love it. So that's going to be my, um, my Lisa Frank cowl. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do one color of the background, like the black will be black. This middle part will be this color. And then I will do gradient, like going like rainbow colors, sections, working my way up. Nope, nope, the background color will change. Oh, I have all that. Let's put that back in my container. This was a birthday gift from my friend. And so this is perfect to put all of those colors in, all of those cakes of yarn. And here are the other new colorways. Um, look at this. This is my scrap bin of my DK Candy Kisses. <laughs> you can see I barely used this one for the last cowl. I'll, I'll use more of it when I do the duplicate stitching, but I gave away, I did in a giveaway, I did my first colorways from um, a doodle cowl. That was the Arctic doodle cowl with trees and snowflakes and stuff. So I don't have those in here, but other than that, I have quite the stash and this will be perfect now for future cowls, future projects. If I want to do color work and things, this would make a really fun sweater. Oh my word, you know, it would be so fun. A sweater with all of these Lisa Frank colorways with like two rows of black in between each one. So like two rows of black and then a section of this and two rows of black and a section of this and two like stripes over the whole sweater. So pastel neons and black. Oh my word, that would be so much fun. Too many projects. I wanna make them all. Okay. Life news. Sit down, just chill out, Luna. It's okay, chill out. Um, I have mentioned before that I've been into the doctor for testing trying to find answers. I've actually been going since I was about 25 to different doctors, different specialists, trying to find answers. So for decades now, I've been trying to find some answers. And um, this last October, and then just recently we did some more blood work and I finally got some answers. So I have found, I've got now four new, <laughs> in addition to others, diagnoses. One of them being POTS. Um, if you're familiar with that, I can't remember what it even stands for. Po postural or, or orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. I probably got that way wrong. I don't know. It's all new to me. And another one being Lyme disease. And we figured out that I've actually had that since I was 17 when I got Bell's palsy and that the cause of Bell's palsy, the majority of the time is um, Lyme disease. So I've been dealing with this for most of my life. 
There are other things as well, but they're not quite as significant um, as that. And it's a relief to finally have some answers, but it's also overwhelming because it means there's a long road ahead. <laughs> but I have started treatment for it and treatment for it, it can be really rough. And so um, there's something called the, the Herx reaction with Lyme disease when you start to have the die off, um, that that can be just really hard. And that has just recently hit me. So um, yeah, because of that, I really have just very low energy and low ability to do as much as I've done before. So um, that's one reason why I haven't been recording. I haven't done, like I have Patreon channel. I have not been keeping up with that. So I paused um, payment for that. So new people can't subscribe and current subscribers will not be charged for that um, until I can get on top of things and feel like I can manage things a little bit better. Um, but also trying to stay on top of dyeing yarn and making things and taking care of my family and homeschooling and all of the things has just been a lot. So, um, yeah, like all of the yarn that I have dyed, I've got to photograph that and edit the photos and add the listings. And I don't know when I'll be able to. So when I can, then I will. <laughs> um, so what I'm focusing on right now is um, preparation for an upcoming fiber festival. It's the Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair that happens once a year in the spring here in Utah. And it is a fantastic one. It is so fun. We have really, really great vendors, Yarn Cafe Creations, Dragon Horde Yarn, Art Nouveau, Yarnaceous, um, um, Marionated Fibers, marinated fibers, marinated yarns. Anyways, there are a lot of really good vendors there. And so it is well attended and it is a very, very fun one to uh, be a vendor at and also just to go and visit. So I highly recommend it. If you live anywhere nearby, I recommend going to that. That's April 26th and April 27th. And you can find that um, on Instagram at G B F A F, which stands for Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair or Festival. Fair? I think it's fair. Anyway, so I'm just focusing on preparations for that. And um, one of the really great benefits of preparing for a fiber festival is that, or like a trunk show, is that then you always have to have more than you're going to need because you want your shop to always be stocked, even at the very end of a show, so that anybody coming feels like they have things that they can choose from. And that means that afterwards, I will have a lot to put in my shop, and then I can take a break for a couple of months and recuperate. So um, I'm just doing as much as I can to prepare for that, and I will just focus on that and doing the monthly minis club and that's that's what I'm going to be doing so um I appreciate those of you who are concerned who have reached out and asked me like some people have sent me a message I haven't seen you for a while are you doing okay and that's really kind that you even notice <laughs> I don't notice a lot of things like that so I appreciate those of you that are just the my core audience who are just so wonderful always comment watch the videos like you know share things it just it means the world to me so i appreciate that um and then for those who are not really interested in anything to do with my life or my health that's perfectly fine because this is a fiber arts channel so <laughs> i totally get it uh, at the same time, you know, anybody can turn it off at any moment if you're not excited about it. So thank you so much for joining me and um, I hope to see you again soon and we'll just see how things progress and how things go. And until then, enjoy your making. <laughs>